The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. And good morning to you here at 5 a.m. It is finally Friday. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Chris Burton in this morning for Alex Fisher. Well, another day, another development in the debate over what to do about California's sky high gas prices. California yesterday recorded another historic average gas price statewide. That gas price $5.88 for regular unleaded. Californians can expect relief as soon as lawmakers and the governor can come to an agreement. Governor Gavin Newsom is defending his plan to send $400 debit cards to California car owners to offset rising gas prices. Critics of the plan are concerned payments would be based off vehicle registration and not income tax records. And meanwhile, the state capitol, lawmakers in the assembly arguing over another proposal to suspend the state's gas tax. Is that we are in an urgent crisis. Gas prices Mr. are Gallagher, at all time you are high. Speaking to the substance. And you are we out need of order, Mr. Gallagher. relief now. Republicans tried to force a vote for the second time, but could not get the votes to change the rules to allow it. While Republicans want immediate relief, Democrats will likely debate the effort through the budget process. Newsom says payments from his plan could go out as soon as July. His administration is expected to meet with the legislature in the coming days. Your time now is 5.06 and the war in Ukraine has entered its second month, killing an estimated 1,000 civilians and displacing more than 10 million. The actual numbers, though, are likely much higher. Today, President Biden will get a first-hand look at the impact this war is having on Ukrainian families. Bree Jackson has more from Washington. President Biden traveling to Poland this morning after a series of high-stakes meetings in Brussels. The American people would not be part of subsidizing Putin's brutal, unjustified war against the people of Ukraine. The president and European leaders projecting unity against Russia's attacks on Ukraine, including possible chemical attacks, and warning Russian President Vladimir Putin. We would respond. We would respond if he uses it. The nature of the response would depend on the nature of the use. In a video message, Ukraine's president accused NATO leaders of failing to save lives, pressing them to do more. Uh, NATO allies are providing uh, significant support uh, to uh, Ukraine and their armed forces uh, with advanced air defense systems, with uh, anti-tank uh, uh, weapons. World leaders unveiled new sanctions aimed at further crippling Russia's economy. Sanctions against Russia has been extraordinary and exceptional. President Biden also pushing back against criticism that sanctions have failed to stop Russian aggression. I know that eliminating r Russian gas will have costs for Europe, but it's not only the right thing to do from a moral standpoint, it's going to put us on a much stronger strategic footing. The violence has triggered Europe's largest refugee crisis since World War II. More than two million Ukrainians fled to Poland, where President Biden will be able to see the scale of the refugee crisis firsthand. And today, President Biden and the European Union announced new efforts to reduce Europe's dependence on Russian gas and oil. In Washington, I'm Bree Jackson for NBC News. Also making news around the world, the White House appears to be close to completing a new nuclear agreement with Iran. The State Department confirming President Biden may allow Russia to import Iran's excess enriched uranium, the core component to make nuclear weapons. A similar deal was reached in 2015. This comes as Russia refuses to take the threat of nuclear weapons off the table. Your time now, 5.08, and now to the latest coronavirus case data in Kern County. Public Health confirming yesterday it is going back to updating COVID-19 data only on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Public Health says as cases decline and we move from a pandemic to an endemic, it's scaling back on its case reports. But you can see here on Wednesday, 14 new deaths and 89 new cases were reported, bringing our total death count to 2,244. State data, which is still being reported daily, shows 40 people hospitalized with COVID-19 in Kern. Seven more are in the ICU. Data shows how the pandemic is causing a population shift. 
Between July of 2020 and 2021, more than 700,000 people moved away from Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, and Chicago combined. Meantime, cities like Phoenix, Austin, Atlanta, and Boise saw a population spike in that same time. Experts say this can be explained by rising rent and overall cost of living, along with people finding jobs where they can work from home. And state officials have extended the COVID rent relief program through the end of this month. The state will help tenants with unpaid rent and utilities owed from April 1st, 2020 through March 31st, 2022. Landlords can also get reimbursed for an eligible renter's unpaid rent. Eligible households may get up to 18 months of assistance to cover rent debt accrued during the pandemic. For more information on how to apply for rent relief and requirements for tenants and landlords, you can visit our website, kget.com. The Dime Nest 532. In your 17 Crime Watch this morning, a man is behind bars arrested for a murder that happened almost two years ago. On Wednesday, officers with the Bakersfield Police Department's Violent Criminal Apprehension Team arrested 46-year-old James Glass of Bakersfield on a warrant for murder. That warrant was in connection with the July 8, 2020 murder of 68-year-old Henrietta Snowden at a home on Chester Place. The coroner's office ruled her cause of death as multiple blunt force trauma. And we now know the name of a man shot to death Tuesday night near the intersection of California Avenue and P Street. The coroner's office says 32-year-old Michael Rico Stubbs suffered multiple gunshot wounds. He died at the scene. If you know anything about the shooting, you're asked to call BPD at 327-7111 or current secret witness at number 322-4040. From our 17 News follow-up file now, a Delano woman who died in a rollover crash at the base of the grapevine has been identified. It happened around 11 o'clock Tuesday night. According to the CHP, 23-year-old Andriana Mia Rea, who was a passenger, was killed. Officers say Rea was not wearing a seatbelt. CHP says the vehicle might have been racing another vehicle before the driver lost control and flipped the car. The driver, Juan Edgar Morales, was arrested. A loaded gun was also found in the vehicle. Morales is charged with firearm offenses along with willful cruelty to a child because officers say four kids were in the vehicle and a one-year-old child was not properly restrained. In your 17 court watch this morning, court documents indicate a man arrested for copper wire thefts and who led deputies on a wild chase through orchards and roads in western Kern County expressed relief that he'd been caught. The documents say 46-year-old Christopher Williams told investigators he was desperate for money trying to eke out a meager existence for himself and his fentanyl-addicted teenage son. He and his 15-year-old son were arrested earlier this month, and prosecutors charged him with dozens of counts of grand theft and vandalism, as well as child cruelty and possession of a stolen vehicle. A private investigator described him as public enemy number one, inflicting hundreds of thousands of dollars in damages in Kern County alone, and potentially up to $1 million in total damage overall, He's due back in court next month. Your time now is 535 and making news around town. Some of the worst drug abuse, mental illness and poverty in the valley is in Oildale. So is a dedicated nonprofit striving to eradicate it. And now that nonprofit itself has a need. 17's Robert Price has their story. Four, five, six years ago, David and Tanya Holt were in the grip of demons, alcoholism, drug addiction and violence. At least they were in good company. On Beardsley Avenue, the southernmost street in Oildale, it was epidemic, still is. That's what inspired a preacher by the name of Ben Hanna to open the Church Without Walls in 2006 to give people struggling with those issues a place to go for sustenance in every sense, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. David Holt was one of those needy souls. They would actually preach over here by the market and just people would come up even to, with their beers on the side drinking and listening and hearing God's word and pretty soon after a while they're more involved and they don't have their beer anymore. Now that Hannah has semi-retired and moved away, the Holtz run the operation and the need, they say, is ongoing. These people are struggling with mental illness and drug addiction and homelessness and poverty. It's amazing the transformation you see take place when you encourage them a little bit and show them love. Remember their name. Smiles from ear to ear. Every Thursday, a physician from Clinica Sierra Vista visits to conduct free health screenings. Flood Ministries, which helps people navigate homelessness, is here that day too. Every third Thursday, a dentist and a veterinarian are in the house. We serve as like a hub and a liaison for other organizations to come out because we have weekly contact with this community. Penny Whittington is the assistant pastor. 
We are actually a mission, we're not a church. We're called into an area that the culture is totally different from what might be the mainstream out there. We are in a totally different country here, and it's very cool. And we have the flight path right above us, which is also very, very cool. <laughs> but the church without walls needs some permanence. Nothing with walls, of course, that would ruin the vibe. But a carport type structure with a permanent roof would be a game changer. The existing open sided canopy must be broken down and changed every six months and re permitted. Its tie downs can be a hazard. And without a building permit to obtain electricity, church services must be powered by generator. A carport with a roof, permanent restrooms, and a new sewer line would be huge. So would new permanent showers. Those will have walls, will have walls. <laughs> but the sanctuary will not have walls. All they need to make that happen is $312,000. That's the bid from Pyramid Construction. Assistant Pastor Tanya Holt says the church's name, its distinctive feature, is part of its message. Church Without Walls is not just the fact that we don't have building walls. It's also the fact that we, um, we are a church that's transparent because we cannot progress um, in a world of illusions. Eloise Sanchez happily received a new backpack and a shower. It's a blessing. You know, I thank God that, that Church Without Walls helps us out. If this looks like a camping shower, that's because it is. Church Without Walls is looking for new showers, new restrooms, and a little more permanence. At Church Without Walls in Oildale, Robert Price, 17 News. If you'd like to help, you can visit Church Without Walls, oildale.org. In the meantime, the community is invited to learn more about human trafficking in Kern County and what local politicians are doing to crack down on this modern day form of slavery. Tomorrow at 2 p.m., representatives of the district attorney's office will be at Church Without Walls on Beardsley Avenue to talk more about Senate Bill 1042. The bill, sponsored by State Senator Shannon Grove of Bakersfield, would elevate human trafficking to violent crime status, making it a strike under the state's three strikes law. The Bakersfield Ronald McDonald House unveiled its new peace poll yesterday. The poll, which was created by the Bakersfield East Rotary Club, includes messages of peace and understanding in English, Korean, French, and Spanish. It is the third peace poll in Bakersfield, following the installation of polls at Bakersfield College and the Boys and Girls Club of Kern County. The project is a personal one for director Scarlett Sabin, whose son lived in South Korea as a Rotary Exchange student. People often ask me, well, why did you let your child go so far away, especially to a country that has such a rough political climate? But I wanted him to learn about how to interact in difficult situations and how to learn about the world from a different lens than maybe the one just books teach. The Bakersfield East Rotary Club says it's planning to unveil a fourth piece poll next Saturday, which is set to be installed at the fort up in Taft. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.